You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Welcome back to Howdy Sailing. Thank you so much for joining once again. These videos are made possible by my patrons as well as my coffee supporters. So a giant, giant thank you to them as well as my channel subscribers. So what is route planning? What exactly does that even mean? The novice or beginner sailor will generally assume route planning is simply picking where you're going to leave from and where you're heading. However, proper route planning takes a bit more than that to accomplish safely. Next to your vessel's seaworthiness, route planning is one of the most important things when it comes to sailing. Whether coastal cruising, island hopping, or crossing oceans, a skilled sailor will be able to plan his route safely, efficiently, and take advantage of currents, winds, seasons, as well as a variety of other factors. The main idea when it comes to planning a passage on a sailing vessel is simply to be in the correct place at the correct time, and on the flip side of that, to not be in the wrong place at the wrong time. An example of this might be something like sailing through a pirate, politically charged location. Not usually the safest idea and easily avoidable during the stages of your route planning. Another example would be sailing through the Caribbean during peak hurricane season. Not the smartest thing you can do, and again, easily avoidable. Whenever possible, you need to choose your weather windows correctly. Time your trips according to trade winds and currents to be in your favor. This is usually easily accomplished by simply picking correct times as well as routes. With today's technology and weather prediction capabilities, it's fairly easy for the most part to pick good weather windows and be able to take advantage of currents as well as favorable wind conditions. Weather today can be predicted with at least a reasonable level of accuracy. You should also be aware of the water temperatures on your routes. For example, when crossing the Gulf Stream off the coast of Florida, the water temperatures in the Gulf Stream are quite a bit warmer than the surrounding waters. This means often thunderstorms as well as random squalls out of simply nowhere. Not a giant concern if planned properly, just something to be aware of. A wise sailor will use everything they have to get an advantage they can when planning their trip. Often waiting just a day can make your voyage nice and smooth. However, rushing and choosing the incorrect weather window could turn what should be an easy six hour sail into a 14 hour ordeal that is not enjoyable for anyone involved. You need to be aware of what your boat can and cannot handle. Any vessel meant for any type of offshore voyage should be able to withstand the average squall or gale force wind that may arise. The biggest dangers to a sailing vessel as far as weather is concerned would be hurricanes, typhoons, or water spouts. For the most part, these are easily avoidable as they occur during certain seasons and location. Hurricane season, for example, runs from June to November, and hurricane information is readily available at the touch of a button via your smartphone. A Category 4 or 5 hurricane is something to be avoided at all costs, and surviving one of these while on a sailboat is no easy feat. Still, with all the information available at our fingertips, every year sailors and vessels wind up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Something to keep in mind that most people miss is that when visiting locations in these areas prone to hurricanes or other extreme weather conditions, is having your route home already planned if the need arises for you to get out of Dodge ASAP. Even though these days GPS has pretty much eliminated the need for paper charts, still knowing how to use paper charts and planning your route via these charts is a skill any good captain should know. You can download them to your tablet and have backups available on numerous devices. There really is nothing more satisfying than grabbing an actual paper chart and plotting your course. The American Sailing Association has a fantastic course on this and I will link the book in the description below. It's very easy to learn and once you have mastered it, it will be a great skill for you to have for the rest of your life. Something that happens all too often when route planning is people only plan for the actual crossing, not what to do long term once you are across. Where do you fuel up? What route do you take after you've crossed? For example, if coming from the Canary Islands and planning a few months cruising around the Lesser Antilles, most people are just concerned with getting across as fast as possible, not taking into account the routes to island hop through the Caribbean once here. Obviously, during cruising season in the Caribbean, the logical way to cruise the islands would be from south to north. This way, you're not going through the same islands over and over. Unless, of course, you fall in love with one of our magical islands here and you choose to do just that. Now, if the plan is to cross the Atlantic and then later head to the Pacific and through the Panama Canal, it would be better to land on this side further north, such as Martinique, then sail south through the islands towards Grenada. Going that route, you will generally have far better winds when sailing the Lesser Antilles, as well as a shorter passage from there to the Panama Canal. Now, depending on your route, again, you need to be aware of what your boat can and cannot do, as well as what it can carry. 
Unfortunately, today's sailors, many of them, rely heavily on motoring. If your route will take you through the area known as the doldrums, you need to make sure your boat has enough fuel to get through that area, as often there will be zero, and I mean absolutely zero wind for weeks on end. Without a fuel there, you will not be having a great time. You also need to be aware of where you are going and what requirements are necessary, what visas, cruising permits, vaccines, and things of that nature you will need. Ignorance of the requirements needed to enter a country is not a valid excuse, although currently most sailing channels are attempting to use this as their excuse for what in reality is just poor planning. You can see them on the YouTube sailing channels with their I know my rights. Well, I know where you're from, and I also know you sound like a fucking idiot. Well, the information under the current situation is constantly changing almost on a daily basis, and in some places without notice, this is still not a valid excuse. Do your planning properly and find out what is needed. With everything currently going on, in reality, you are simply better staying put and waiting until things get back to something resembling normal. I personally have been stuck in the Caribbean for a year now. It's simply not worth it to me to risk losing my boat if I wind up somewhere that has some crazy restriction that I didn't know about, and then I wind up losing my boat or winding up with a gigantic fine I can't afford. If planning extended cruising, let's say for 30 days or more, it's also advised to take into account marinas on your route that have facilities needed to deal with any repairs that may arise. Depending on your vessel, you may have few options or several. A catamaran, for instance, generally has far less haul-out options than a monohull. Also, the larger the vessel, the less options for haul-out and a working yard. So, knowing where your marinas are located on your route for extended voyages is very, very important to know. Where can you go in the event of an emergency that you do need to do some heavy repairs? Simple common sense can solve most of the issues with route planning, although these days that appears to be something that has been lost on most. Nowhere is this more true than when it comes to navigation. Many rely on GPS and GPS alone, and that's simply not a good habit to get into. Latitude is your friend when navigating. If unsure of reefs or certain location of dangers and other things, it's generally safer to assume the latitude is correct, as most of these dangers were calculated long before modern instruments, and many charts of remote areas have yet to be updated. So, if one wishes to avoid a certain danger but is unsure of the exact location, Avoiding the latitude altogether is not difficult and should keep you pretty safe. Patience is key when it comes to route planning and sailing in general. Waiting for the proper weather window, making sure your route is properly mapped, leaving your itinerary with friends and family in case of an emergency, and knowing the marinas along your route that can handle your vessel. Knowing the requirements for cruising through different areas and the requirements for entering each country are all simple things, but yes, they are time consuming, but if done properly, will make your cruising adventures a much, much more enjoyable experience. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, these videos are all brought to you by my patrons as well as my coffee supporters. So a giant, giant thank you to them. Consider becoming a patron. You do get access to our members area where I'm on daily to chat. I also offer one-on-one -on -one consulting if you're serious about getting on the water and getting started. You can become a patron and join our members area for as little as $10 a month. That's less than the price of Netflix and it's like 25 cents a day. Hop on over, join us on the members area. Come chat, say hi, let us know what you're all about and what your plans are. Hope to see you there and if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one.